the braiding angle between two sectors is given by uh, basically uh, the contraction of the L vectors with the inverse of K. And so you could see that uh, in order to have a local uh, potential term, I would like to choose the L uh, uh, the L1 vector, you, you could see that uh, the, the, these components ensures that you, uh, it has a uh, trivial braiding angle with any other sectors, with any other L vectors with integer components. And therefore, if I would like to choose a, a local potential term, I would have to make sure that uh, Li corresponds one to one of the uh, uh, both, uh, L vectors of the bosonic sector. But then that is not uh, good enough alone. A second, uh, 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 what we hope to do, uh, what we hope to achieve with this potential term is that uh, we hope that uh, this is a relevant operator uh, uh, and that uh, eventually uh, it, uh, uh, the, uh, the phi i's would be trapped in one of the minima of this potential. Uh, if, if you want to do that, then it better be true that L i phi i behaves like a uh, could behave like a C number. It could acquire uh, an expectation value, uh, but then in general, uh, as is shown in some uh, in, in previous talks, uh, the commutation relations of the phi i's after you have canonically quantized this action is not trivial. Uh, the uh, commutation relations uh, are again uh, given by. some coefficients are equal to Li So the, com the commutation relations between uh, uh, two, two linear combinations of phi's uh, is in general non-zero. So in general, uh, if I have the same, uh, com uh, if I have the commutator of uh, two phi's, the same linear combination, or uh, uh, contracted to the same uh, L vector L, I'm still not going to get zero. And that kind of linear combination uh, is not a good choice uh, where I could, I, I, I should keep in in, in the uh, potential term because it would not behave like it could not behave like a C number and get trapped in a particular potential uh, in a particular minimal. Uh, of the potential term. Therefore, uh, a second condition that I would have to impose is that uh, not only that these Li's correspond to the bosonic sector, but that it also should be true that uh, Li Kij uh, inverse Lj is exactly equal to zero. In that case, uh, uh, I could be sure that this linear combination could in fact be trapped in a minimum of the potential to, uh, of the of the potential. So, combining these conditions that L i has to be a boson. Secondly, L i has to be uh, uh, L, L i inverse k L j has to be identically zero. It's not hard to see what kind of terms I could write down. There are exactly two sets of terms that I could write down here. So, set number one. So set number one is two by one, corresponding to having uh, L, the L vector equals uh, two and zero. A set uh, that this then clearly satisfies the conditions that uh, I, I uh, just mentioned. And a second set of term is cosine of uh, two phi three. This is another allowed set of choice. And uh, now it is pretty clear that uh, if I look at this set of terms, uh, phi one corresponds to uh, electric excitations. Uh, re recall that uh, phi one uh, is related to electric excitations. And uh, now if I am imposing, uh, if phi one acquires an expectation value, uh, get, uh, 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 phi 1 gets trapped in uh, one of the minimum of the potential term, then it is indeed uh, that, that I could uh, uh, 
legally claim that uh, the electric sector has condensed, has uh, uh, in, in this field theory, that I actually have an electric condensing. Uh, and second, uh, so alternatively, if I look at the potential term V2, uh, V2 uh, if, if phi2 is trapped in one of the minimum of, of uh, V2 and acquires an expectation value, then indeed uh, this uh, set of potential would correspond to having the magnetic sector, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which corresponds to, uh, uh, which is directly related to the phi2 uh, field, uh, it, uh, it, it would, would no longer be conserved and indeed there, there is a condensate of the magnetic charges. And it was the work of uh, 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 Michael Webber that uh, he, he, he demonstrated that uh, the uh, requirements that we put on the Lagrangian subset, uh, basically uh, these four conditions, are uh, in one-to-one -one correspondence with this kind of potential terms that you could write down, such that uh, the bar, uh, the, uh, the, uh, some of the fields would acquire an expectation value uh, and, be and be trapped in one of the minima of the model. Uh, it would be tra trapped in one of the minimum of, of the potential term. Uh, and, 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 and as we see here, that uh, every time it acquires an expectation value, it does correspond to uh, the, uh, condensation of uh, a sec uh, some sectors of, of, of the anions. Uh, so, so, so what this, the, the bottom line in, the, in this exercise is, uh, Lagrange uh, boundary conditions corresponds to any condensation. So, so this is the first part of my talk. Is there any question? So, if I if I make a if I make a domain war between B bar and B two, right? Uh, what what happens? Uh, then you have to relax one of these uh, conditions. So, in particular. Uh, the, that every non-member has non-trivial statistics with member has to be relaxed. In that case, uh, I would be able to construct a domain law between uh, uh, a phase and another phase. Because not everything is confined, so this other side could be more non-trivial. Uh, so you mean what kind of potential? Uh, so, so the V1 and V2, right? Cosine 2 pi 1, cosine 2 pi 2, right? So we look at the one-dimensional boundary, but look at the domain law between V1 boundary and V2. Uh, domain wall between B1. Yeah, so the cosine 2 pi. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. That's, I mean, that's a term you, you add to the boundary here. That's right? true, that's true, that's true, that's true. So you mean what happens at the junction? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, 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 so I, I, is that, that, that is a separate story that I, I, I'm not considering. <laughs> right, right. But uh, I think in general it would trap some zero modes there in complete. But I'm not sure. So, uh, so that is the first part of the story. The second part of the story would be to act, uh, ha having found the boundary conditions. The second part of the story is to actually count the ground state degeneracy. So, um, when you try to write down. Say for phi one, I want to I want it to gain a fair, a get trapped in one of the minimum of the potential. But if phi one has non-trivial commutation relation with itself, then it is uh, you, you cannot have a fair. It would not be consistent for phi one to have gain a fair. 
Whereas in this case, phi 1 actually commutes with phi 1. And so it could behave like a C number and acquire an expectation value. Is there any meaning of this uh, phi 1 has zero density of a C phi over an alpha? Uh, if, uh, if a pi alpha or a pi, sorry, zero density of pi pi plus pi. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, that is uh, precisely why uh, that, that, oh, that okay. follows from the compactness of the gauge theory and that this else becomes quantized. Second part of my talk, I would like to talk about counting ground state degeneracy. So we are still looking at the Tory code model, and let us now put things on uh, a cylinder. So the question is, okay, uh, uh, I need boundary conditions, and so to start with, let me just choose, uh, let's say, the electric condensate on this bound, characterizing this boundary, and also the. And uh, at, uh, the, on the other boundary, I'm also characterizing it by the electric uh, condensate. So there are two condensates on two boundaries, and they're the same. So uh, how would I start uh, uh, looking for ground state degeneracy of, 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 of this system? Uh, one very natural thing that I would do, uh, if you recall what one would do with the case of closed manifolds, is that I could build a uh, basis for this ground state by looking at closed anion loops or Wilson lines around non-contractible cycles. So in particular, if I, uh, I, I put the toric code model on a, uh, on a torus, then I could build four different ground states uh, out of it. Namely, I could wind around this non-contractible cycle by one or E or M or F. And so uh, I would end up with uh, the conclusion that uh, GSD on the torus is equals to four, equals to the number of anions that I actually have. So we could play the same game here, and uh, uh, naively, I could, again, uh, there's a non-contractible cycle here, so I would uh, wind a Wilson line around it, and naively, I also have one E and M and F. But uh, recall that what happens in the presence of the boundary is that these boundaries are characterized by some condensate. Therefore, uh, uh, in, in particular here, we have an electric condensate at the boundary. Therefore, uh, if I put on a, uh, an electric Wilson line here, it would have the possibility of leaking out from either the top boundary or the bottom boundary. Therefore, I would not be able to distinguish uh, one and E. And similarly, if I start off with a magnetic uh, uh, Wilson line or any loop around this cycle, I could easily take an extra electric line from, from the boundaries and fuse it with M. <coughs> and so basically, I would not be able to distinguish M and F either. And so out of the four possibilities, four possible Wilson lines that I wind around the, the cylinder, I have actually a reduction of ground state degeneracy. And so basically, uh, I would here, the ground state degeneracy is actually equal to two. So the presentation that I give here is slightly different from the one uh, that uh, Juven, uh, Juven and uh, uh, Professor Wood gave in their paper. In their paper, uh, uh, they, uh, the, the way they co uh, counted this ground state degeneracy is via uh, charge transform. The idea was that uh, if I am allowed, uh, so, so, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the idea is that the ground state degeneracy is also equal to the number of channels, the number of fusion channels that you could find between uh, the uh, uh, condensates such that they fuse to one. So that corresponds to, uh, so uh, let me be more explicit. Uh, so uh, here I have two condensates. Uh, one and one could fuse to one, or similarly, uh, E and E could fuse to one, and so I would conclude that the ground state degeneracy is given by two. What that means is, if I have uh, two non-trivial anions having a fusion channel fusing to one between these two boundaries, corresponds is equivalent, is, a, uh, is an alternative way to say that uh, an anion, uh, uh, the electric anion, has been transported 
from a uh, from one boundary to the other boundary. If a transport is uh, uh, if if you transport a, a, a if you transport an anion, which is a fractional charge across boundaries, you would be taken to a, a different a, a different ground state, and, and so uh, that was how the ground state degeneracy counting goes. So one question is, what exactly is the relationship between this counting of charge transport and our counting using uh, this uh, uh, Wilson lines winding non non trivial loop? And the answer is basically that. They are related by uh, the so-called uh, Laughlin uh, tau thought experiment, the well-known thought experiment, where the claim is that uh, the, the, the thought experiment involves uh, putting a flux uh, through the, this uh, in, in a quantum hole system where I have magnetic field uh, pointing outwards. This is also a quantum Hall system described by Trent Simon's theory. And uh, now if I put in a, a unit of a magnetic flux across the cylinder, which corresponds to uh, having, uh, let's say, this direction, uh, let's call it this circle, circular direction, let's call it x. So let's say if I put in uh, A2x, uh, give it a little bit of time dependence so, uh, I, I start off with AX2 equals zero, and I adiabatically turn on AX2 until it reach one unit of Wilson line around, uh, around this circle. Because this is a quantum Hall system, what I, uh, what I would do is to pump a unit of the electric charge across the boundary. Therefore, the process of winding one unit of the, Wilson li uh, uh, of the magnetic Wilson line around uh, the non-contractible cycle of the cylinder is equivalent, is in one-to-one -one correspondence to this charge transport picture. And so these two pictures are equivalent and they are connected in this way. And we will see that what in, in a ra rather mysterious way, this picture is preserved in the non-abelian story. And it, in fact, uh, by requiring uh, this correspondence between these two pictures, uh, it, it helps us in finding uh, 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 in introducing uh, 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 the concept of multiplicity that uh, otherwise we, we would not be aware of. So let me go now, having uh, uh, collected all these components that has been uh, understood in the Albelian theory, now we will move on to uh, non the non-Albelian story. And let me give one other example that is also interesting. Uh, in, in the toric code model, clearly we have, uh, we have two different set of boundary conditions. So previously, I just showed you one set. Uh, I, I just showed you one possibility where I choose uh, the electric boundary condition on both boundaries. Uh, alternatively, I could have chosen LE on one side and LM on the other side, where there's a magnetic condensate here and there's an electric condensate here. So what would be the ground state degeneracy here? If I use the Wilson line picture, uh, then I would conclude that uh, one E, M, F, uh, both E and M could leak out either on this side or the other side. And therefore, all of the four Wilson lines are now distinguishable here. And therefore, the ground state degeneracy is equal to one. Okay, so now let me actually move on to non abelian phases. Okay, so uh, uh, so so I hope I have uh, convinced you that uh, by to uh, de determine the boundary condition of this uh, uh, topological order, it corresponds to looking for a set of uh, condensate. Of, of, of anions such that all other anions not condensed are confined. Then you would be able to get this kind of gap boundary conditions. Uh, uh, the, what is uh, a little bit um, non uh, so what happens in non abelian uh, theory is that in general, when I have look at the fusion between anions, uh, they, then uh, the quantum dimension of anions uh, are greater than one. 
So in particular, what that means is if I have the fusion of uh, two anions, instead of having a unique product, uh, it, it, it in general would give me some other things. So some of the concepts that I define here becomes a little bit um, uh, uh, tricky, becomes a little bit ambiguous. For example, when I talk about uh, members uh, inside uh, members inside uh, uh, the condensed set forms are uh, closed under fusion, that clearly in general would not be true anymore. So I, I don't exactly know what I mean here. And uh, uh, the mutual statistics between members are trivial. Uh, this might also be very tricky because uh, when I consider the uh, braiding statistics between two members, uh, uh, be between two anions, I would have to specify the fusion channel before I could talk about uh, the braiding statistics. And so, uh, and so this, this also becomes a little bit uh, ambiguous. And so, uh, so, so I, I, I am not able to directly apply all the lessons that we have learned in, our Abel uh, in the abelian story to non-abelian story. But fortunately, uh, the idea of anion condensation is not new. And uh, it, uh, uh, Bias and many of his uh, collaborators uh, have, for many years, tried to give, uh, tried to give a systematic uh, rule, give a set of systematic rules uh, to guess how you do non-abelian anion condensation and answer each of these questions uh, and give an answer to each, or uh, give a definition to each of these uh, uh, rules that we have here. And so, we, uh, we, uh, so what in the following, we will be applying the technology developed by Bias and show that there is a simple answer uh, to, to this set of rules, uh, even for non-abelian uh, theories. So rather than uh, spilling out these rules, I'll show you a very simple and nice example involving the Fibonacci cross Fibonacci bar theory, the time reversal of Fibonacci. So much, very much like the Tauric code model, I will spill out the necessary uh, topological data of this theory. Uh, and then we, we see that using that topological data, uh, it is enough to work out uh, well, what anions are condensing and uh, what, uh, what, what, are the confined what are the confined particles and unconfined particles. So I will demonstrate this in this nice example. So uh, this, uh, the, uh, this model, again, has four different anions. Uh, so now I'll start with the statistics of, of these four different anions. So you can see that it is just a direct product of two copies of the Fibonacci uh, model. Uh, uh, one copy has two sectors, one tau. And this is just a direct product of, of, of two copies. And the statistics of uh, one one, uh, which is the trivial sector in this model, is just one. For one tau bar, uh, it is a non-trivial complex number. And for tau one, uh, it is the complex conjugate of this non-trivial complex number. And for tau tau bar, the uh, statistics is just the product of these two non-trivial <coughs> complex number because uh, they are complex conjugate of each other, so it's again one. Uh, then uh, the, the next thing, uh, it, I, I would like to know the uh, uh, so, so, so the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, let's start with uh, rule number one. Uh, I want to ha choose some condensate, and that every member is a boson. Uh, this is something that is still very well defined here. I can write down the statistics of each sector, and therefore you can see that among these four different anions, there's only one non-trivial anion that could potentially condense, and that is tau tau bar. So let us choose our set of, of uh, Lagrangian subset, we we'll, uh, hand-wavingly call, still call it that, uh, to be a one and tau tau bar. But there's a, a, a problem here. The problem is, let us look at the quantum dimension of, of these four sectors. 
Uh, this information I did not give in the Tori code model because the Tori code model is an abelian model, meaning that the quantum dimension of each of these sectors is just equal to one. But then here, things are a bit more non-trivial. Uh, the quantum dimension of the trivial sector is still one. Uh, the quantum dimension of uh, uh, these two sectors is equal to, let me call that gamma. Gamma is the golden ratio. It's not even a rational number. It's one plus square root of five or thirteen. And uh, tau tau bar is just the direct product of tau and tau bar. Therefore, it is equal. Uh, the quantum dimension of this guy is equal to gamma square. And let me add that gamma square is equal to one plus gamma. So the crucial idea that uh, Bias put into his set of rules is that in the present, uh, if I were to choose tau tau bar. Uh, to, to condense, uh, so tau tau bar would have to behave like a vacuum after it has condensed. But then tau tau bar has non-trivial quantum dimension, and that does that is not how vacuum should behave. So he came up with the following idea, and that is he think of uh, this kind of con condensation as very similar to what we would do in uh, breaking a group. So you could think of these things as representations of some quantum groups, in effect. And so uh, if I'm uh, having a condensate, uh, uh, like, in what ha like what happens in a group, then in general, the representations of a group would have to be decomposed in terms of representations of the group that is left unbroken by the condensate. And therefore, uh, he, he makes the following proposal. When I have a condensate in general, I would have to decompose uh, these annuals into uh, some sub annuals. So uh, uh, for one, one, for one, for example, since it has quantum dimension just one, so it cannot further split into anything else. So uh, after the condensation has occurred, it is still equal to one. It still behaves like the trivial sector. But then tau tau bar. Uh, it has quant quantum dimension greater than one. So what happens is that it has to break up after it has condensed, it has to break up into several sectors. In particular, since it is condensing and behaving like a vacuum, it has to break up to a copy of the vacuum plus some other thing. So, so let me call this some other thing X. And in this process, since I'm doing essentially a decomposition of representation, the dimension, the quantum dimension before and after the decomposition should be conserved. So x should have a uh, dimension gamma, because gamma plus 1 is gamma squared. Uh, similarly, uh, if I have tau 1, this guy has quantum dimension greater than 1, but then it has quant quantum dimension less than 2. Therefore, it cannot decompose, it, it, it cannot split into two things uh, with both quantum dimension greater than 1. And so let me call that y after the con let, uh, let me call that uh, what it has come uh, if after it has condensed, let me call uh, what it becomes y. Just give it a name. And finally, one tau for the same reason, it cannot split into two things. And let me call it z. So after I have done this decomposition, uh, I have to identify, I've determined what are these x, y, and z. And the idea is, uh, in order to determine this x, y, and z, what we would do is, uh, the assumption is that this decomposition is consistent with the uh, fusion rules of the original theory. So in particular, uh, for example, uh, uh, tau and tau fuse to one plus tau. So in particular, uh, one tau, for example, one tau bar and one tau bar, uh, sorry, tau tau bar, would fuse into uh, tau one plus uh, tau tau bar uh, plus uh, tau, uh, tau bar. Uh, yeah. So uh, if I look at the fusion, original fusion rules, oh, this is what I get. So now I have